Hello again. Well, it's been some time since I've been out here with the airbrush and I've been itching to get back and have another go. Because I've just started a new job, I've not really had much chance. But anyway, here we are, I made it out here now. And I was discussing with Nikki the next picture I should do with the airbrush. And she suggested I should do a shoe, which I thought was uh, an interesting idea. So I've had a hunt around over the internet for a sort of picture of a shoe. And uh, I've come up with this, which looks like maybe the sort of thing someone might want airbrushed on their car or their bonnet or their bike, perhaps. So this is what I'm going to attempt. Now, it's slightly different this time because I've not got the chap from the Airbrush Academy guiding me through it and I haven't got a YouTube tutorial video to work from. So I've got to work this out myself and I thought it might be reasonably simple to do. But uh, the more I look at it, the more complex it seems, of course. Now I thought I might try and do it fairly small. So I've got this off colour steel I might do it on. So I might print this out slightly bigger, perhaps, to get it on there. Uh, it is a rather elongated bit of steel, or I could trim it off, I suppose, using the guillotine. I'll have a bit of a play with that in a minute. The other thing I've done is to add another boot lace to my easel, so the legs come out a little bit more, give me a bit more of an angle here, because I found it was a bit too upright when I was using it before. So yeah, I think I will trim this off slightly. It's, it's not exactly square anyway, it's slightly wider at the bottom than at the top. So I think I want to take perhaps that much off the top and leave me another little bit. And besides, it's a while since I used the guillotine, so might as well make use of that. I'm not going to worry about getting it too square. I'm just going to line it up roughly and give it the chop. So there we go, I think that's a bit more uh, the shape of our original picture. Keep this little bit, maybe do something on that later on. Just to keep things reasonably nice, I'm going to take off the sharp corners here just with a file. So uh, next I'm going to degrease it with a little bit of this turpentine substitute. As I said before, these are only practice pieces, so I'm not worrying too much about the prep, but uh, obviously it's good to get any oily greasiness off. The next thing really is to give it a spray of primer. So there we go, I think that's uh, perfectly adequately primed for our purposes. So as I've said before, these videos are not intended to be tutorials, they're very much a vlog of me learning how to do this. I am an absolute beginner and working it out as I go along a little bit. And of course it may all go wrong uh, and end up absolutely terrible. And if it does, I'll show you that. So I'll show you the project uh, warts and all, but hopefully it will turn out reasonably well. I think the first thing to do is to decide how to go about it. I think probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll coat the background in white first. So we'll paint it on a white background and then I'll maybe do the shoe like a stencil 
um, and possibly the leg as well. And then I'll add in the background, mask it up, add in the background with this sort of graduated effect and the shadow and the um, cigarette and the smoke sort of as the last thing. If you think I should be doing it a different way around, then please let me know. Next thing then is to add some of our white Poundland paint that we've got left over from doing the riveted panels little job we did. I'm just going to leave that to dry for a while before we rub it down and begin our airbrushing. Here I'm cutting out the shape of the red part of the shoe to make a stencil. Next, a rub down with 800 grit paper. Then I'm taping the stencil in position securely. This paper is a bit thin and floppy. Now I'm adding in the red part of the shoe. Now the black at the edge of the shoe and the shadow of the heel. Well, a few things occur to me now I'm into this project and the first is that I've really set myself a bit of a challenge by doing it this small um, it really isn't that easy uh, it would have been much easier to do this uh, a bit bigger maybe sort of A4 size probably should have done that but now I started we'll persist with it see how it turns out the other thing is that it probably was a silly decision to do the shoe first and the background afterwards. I think it would have been much better to do the background and then make a stencil and sort of flash over in white to then put the shoe on top, if that makes sense. I think that would have been a better way to do it, but we'll see how it turns out doing the background last. But I think probably um, from what I've seen, you generally do the background first I think. Well the next thing to do given that we are doing the shoe first I think is to put these white highlights in. I haven't got a stencil small enough to do this sort of effect highlighting effect. This is similar to I think what we did with the flames so I think I'm gonna have to make one. So the easiest thing I think is going to be to use a bit of this transparency film and mark on in this pen where I want that curve to be looking at my example up there well I reckon that sort of goes like that actually it's not that big 
So the good thing about this, get a bit of a second shot at it. Extend that out to the edges of this. So if I did it right on the edge here, I'd get maybe a line from the overspray. So I think as long as I give it a little bit of generous cut into this transparency, I should be okay. Now, I'm wondering if I'll be able to use that as well down there. Might not be able to, might need a sharper one for down there, so um, I'm gonna mark that as well. Oops. Well there you go, I've got my uh, little cutouts done there. Let's try painting those highlights. You can hear the uh, rain started outside now. very tricky but uh, I don't think it's too bad a result hopefully so the next thing I think will be to take this stencil off cut off the bottom bits for the sole of the shoe and then stick the stencil back on and put the bit that we cut out for the red part of the shoe back so I can spray in the sole of the shoe there it is so far with the stencil removed I'm just going to give this a quick coat of Intercoat Clear just in case when we stick stuff back on we have to stick to some of the already done airbrushing and that should stop it peeling off with the masking tape when you take it off again, hopefully. Crikey, look at the uh, weather outside. It was sunny when I came out here a few minutes ago. Now it's uh, properly hammering down. So I've given the steel a good coat of Intercoat Clear and I've put the original stencil back in position and I've also taped in the bit that I cut out originally for the shoe. So the only bit of steel that's exposed is the sole. So if you look at our other picture we're working from here, all I need to really do is put in some brown on there to sort of give the shadow on the sole and maybe a little dark strip of black on the very edge. So the next thing to do is to mix up some brown. Well there we go, our shoe has now got a sole to it, so that's good. I'm going to put a little bit more Intercoat Clear just over that in case we have to tape onto it for the next stage. So the next thing really is on our stencil I think to cut out the shape of the leg, so I'll do that now. Okay, so we've got that new sort of masking stencil thing taped back in position over the shoe bit that we've sort of finished. 
and I'm going to use the same brown that we used on the shoe to blow in the edges of the leg and then um, I guess we're going to do this black bit this line is going to be tricky may have to just do that with a pen perhaps what do you think Mr Ginge? oh right Bit windy for you, mate, isn't it? Well, there we go, that's added a, a bit of texture to it, I suppose, hasn't it? Next thing we need to add in is this thing. Not sure what that's called in the world of ladies' fashion, but it's a sort of a, a darker bit, a reinforcing thing. Anyway, the easiest way to do that is to cut that out of the bit that we'd already cut out to make the leg. So on our reference picture this uh, seam detail is going to be tricky. To do that I've made a cut in a piece of the clear acrylic and I'm going to just spray over that cut. Okay well I think the next thing is definitely some more intercoat clear over the top of that to seal that in. Well, I definitely haven't made life easy for myself. What I've done is I've traced round uh, the bulk of the leg and shoe and cut out from the clear acetate this shield, cut some triangles in it so I can mask over it and the mask will stick um, to the steel underneath without going over the edge. I think this little tiny bit here we might just have to do with some really thin uh, automated masking tape that I've got in the box of many things down here. But just so we don't have any unfortunate instance, I'm going to go and have another cup of tea while I wait for that intercoat clear to thoroughly dry. Okay, I tried to cut some masking tape around this end of the hill and unfortunately where I've cut it's caused the paint to come off here so I think what I have to do first is well it's going to be difficult to make any sort of effective repair there but I'm just going to blow in um, another little bit of primer over there and then some white might end up ruining the whole thing, but we'll give it a go. Well, there we go. Obviously, you can still see the primer underneath the white, but that's fine because it's going to be a shaded little bit this area anyway. I'm going to blow black all over it. So hopefully we'll get away with that now obviously i'm not going to be able to easily rub that down again so i think i'm just gonna to have to try airbrushing straight over the top of it doesn't really matter if i make a horrendous mess of this it would be a shame but uh, i'll give that a shot because i don't want to sand it all off and i guess probably should really wait over at night for it to dry if i was going to and uh I haven't really got time for that, so I'm going to give it uh, 
a few minutes and then airbrush over the top of it to add the shading here and the shadow i'm not going to go as heavy as this because i think it might look better on mine if the shadow isn't quite so dark let's have a look and see of the shadow here I think but uh, not too bad maybe anyway let's see if we can get this uh, shield off without uh, causing any more damage yeah that uh, masking tape just doesn't suit that does it I need to get some more red in there don't I let's try and patch that up Okay, so what I've done is I've put the uh, original stencil back on the top and I'm going to just go over this little tiny bit of the heel there that's been damaged with uh, some white and then some red. Well, there you go. That's uh, repaired it after a fashion, I guess. Well, again, for the cigarette butt, I've cut a sort of rectangular, very small rectangular slit in this acetate. And I'm going to use that again as a stencil. So for the cigarette ash, I have made this shield out of a couple of torn edges of paper and a straight edge just to stop it flowing back on the filter. Um, so I'm going to touch that in now in, in black. Well, I've got some white in the gun now, so I can do the uh, smoke from the extinguished cigarette. I'm also going to pop in a little bit of white on the ash, because I think ash usually has some white in it. There's none on this uh, drawing I'm working from. I don't know whose design this is. I, I found it off the internet. It didn't have any information on who originated. It looks like it's been airbrushed originally. So if it's yours, then uh, thank you. Great to uh, have a go at recreating it. I think it's going to be difficult to get this sort of wispiness to the smoke at the size I'm doing it, but uh, we'll give it a go. Right, so, well, there is one last detail. You can see that in this one, there's just a, a, a shadow of the smoke on the leg there. So I'll just add that in. There you go. I really don't think we need any more than that for the shadow on that smoke. Right, I'm going to give it a coat of clear lacquer and then we're done. So that was an interesting exercise. I think doing it that small made it unnecessarily hard, I think. And I don't think my preparation of the steel was very good. I think the problems that I had with the bottom of the heel 
were the primer coming away from the steel so maybe next time I'll um, abrade the surface of the steel before I prime it something like that maybe don't know there's also a couple of bits I'm not entirely happy with but I think generally it didn't come out too bad for a first attempt. Well that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.